it is one of the three organs of the state uh, and it is responsible for delivering justice to both the people and the government good morning students welcome back to plutus is so we are in ninth day of our 95 days prelims challenge so today's topic is uh, judiciary and supreme court right uh, till now yesterday and uh, the day before yesterday we have seen president and important aspects and articles about the president and yesterday we have seen the prime minister prime minister and council of ministers so these two comprise sorry president and the prime minister and the council of ministers comprise the executive right so as we all know there are three organs in the government first one is executive then we have judiciary and we have legislature right so today we are seeing judiciary and tomorrow we will discuss about the legislature so if we discuss these three uh, aspects we will complete the uh, the uh, total government government part in the at the central level so basically these three are the most important aspects and we are we are at the most important stage in our discussion so please try to concentrate and gain as much information as possible right so today uh, i will first introduce what are the topics we are going to cover in this particular lecture first we will see the judiciary in india how it evolved and what are the important aspects um, about the judiciary in india next we will go directly go into um, go and see the supreme uh, supreme court and the aspects related to the supreme court next we will see one important aspect in the supreme court that is the jurisdiction of the supreme court as you all know we have four to five types of jurisdictions with uh, pertaining to supreme court we will understand all those aspects related to supreme court next next we will see uh, one evolving an important uh, aspect that is judicial activism you know as you all know there are uh, questions are being asked from this aspect so yesterday also i reminded like there are increasing number of questions are being asked from the application part application part of the polity so judicial activism is also an application part of the judiciary and uh, the discussion around the judicial activism of the supreme court is increasing day by day because supreme court is taking important policy and political decisions and it is delivering uh, judgments on those aspects next we will also see another important aspect that is also uh, in news continuously that is public interest litigation pil so we will also see the evolution of the pil and important or significance of the public interest litigation in the last before the end of the lecture we will also see some of the previous questions that are asked uh, from this topic right so this is uh, this will be our uh, structure uh, of the uh, structure of the uh, today's lecture so first we will understand judiciary judiciary in india <coughs> so within the framework of parliamentary democracy and uh, federalism judiciary plays a crucial role so the judiciary has crucial role in governance right why it has crucial role because we have organs of the government three organs of the government that is executive judiciary and legislature so there is a separation of powers separation of powers among these three organs executive judiciary and legislature so this separation of powers is enforced by a principle of checks and balances balances checks and 
balances. So, so the Supreme Court works as a cornerstone in ensuring this checks and balances. So it acts as a the judiciary, judiciary, or for that matter, Supreme Court. Supreme Court acts as a strong check against the executing executive as well as the legislator legislature so for this reason it plays a crucial role in the polity and governance of the country right it is one of the three organs of the state uh, and it is responsible for delivering justice justice to both the people and the government so it not only delivers justice to the justice to the people but it also delivers justice to the government right justice is seen as a fundamental requirement of any society so to call a society a just society right working society so uh, the justice is the one of the fundamental qualities of the that particular society so because of all these uh, reasons the judiciary has an important role in the polity and governance of the country <coughs> now we will understand the importance of judiciary in governance so the judiciary is an indispensable part of governance why it is an indispensable part we have seen already so it ensures checks and balances in the governance process and also it guarantees or it provides justice to the people of a particular country so because of these reasons uh, judiciary becomes an indispensable part in the governance and the society so it is crucial for judiciary is crucial for maintaining social order and stability so try to remember these phrases uh, these may come as a point in the question below the question these phrases might come as a point and also when you are writing the mains examination you can use these phrases in your mains answer so please try to remember these phrases so all these aspects explain as the explain as the importance of the judiciary right so before going into the all the aspects first we will try and understand the important articles that are mentioned in the constitution with respect to judiciary so i have i have not taken all the articles i have only taken important articles i have omitted which are not that important so please try to remember the article and the uh, associated thing with that article right first one is article 124 establishment and constitution of supreme court so <coughs> this article also outlines its composition composition of the supreme court appointment of judges and their qualifications right article 125 it discusses about the uh, salaries deals with the determination and the payment of salaries and allowances to the supreme court judges so this shows the emphasizes the financial independence financial independence why they should be financial independence uh, with respect to uh, judiciary or supreme court because they can deliver the uh, judgments without fear or favor so they can uh, deliver their judgments without fear or favor so if financial independence is not there they may give their judgments in favor of the government or the executive so to overcome that aspect financial independence has been ensured uh, to the judiciary by mentioning those aspects in the constitution itself so please try to remember this aspect next one is article 126 appointment of acting chief justice so whenever there is vacancy in the position of the chief justice so the president can appoint a acting chief justice right next one is uh, 127 appointment of ad hoc judges to supreme court right so when whenever the pendency is increasing and the chief justice of india feels that he uh, i mean the, pen, uh, the pendency of cases is increasing 
he can appoint ad hoc judges ad hoc judges ad hoc means temporary all right so the chief justice of india can appoint ad hoc judges whenever he feels that there is increasing pendency of the cases next one is article 129 supreme court to be a court of record so please try to remember this aspect is it uh, very very important because from this article hails the important aspect of contempt of court so this is very very important aspect it becomes much more important when it comes to mains examination because there are lot of controversies about this issue uh, in the way in the manner uh, in which uh, the honorable supreme court or the high courts have used and exercised exercised this aspect contempt of court so there are uh, some famous personalities who have been subjected to contempt of court uh, including arvind kejriwal so when it comes to mains we will discuss much more elaborately about the content of, contempt uh, content of court aspect so in this lecture also in later part we will discuss in brief about the contempt of court so so from the aspect of court of record the com contempt of uh, judiciary comes so the supreme court acts as a court of record granting it the power to maintain record so uh, the two powers associated with court of record are so it maintains the record of its judgments and also it punishes for contempt itself right next is article 130 seat of the supreme court so it designate the seat of the supreme court as delhi and uh, the chief justice can the particular article grants the chief justice to designate any other place as the seat of the supreme court right <coughs> so basically the uh, the chief justice of india has the power to designate any other place as the uh, place of the or seat of the supreme court right next one is article 131 original uh, jurisdiction of the supreme court so it is uh, settling the disputes between the government government of india and states or between the states so whenever there is a dispute between the central government uh, or any other particular states so this is one aspect and the second thing is between the states so if there are any interstate conflicts so that is that comes under the original jurisdic uh, jurisdiction of the supreme court right next is article 132 this is also very very important appellate jurisdiction of supreme court uh, in appeals from high courts in certain cases so in this way uh, it basically uh, looks into the appeals from high courts high courts right next article is article 133 appellate jurisdiction of the supreme court regard to civil matters so article 133 uh, looks into the appellate uh, appellate issues or appeals uh, with respect to civil matters next is article 134 jurisdiction of supreme court with regard to uh, criminal matters and appeals coming from the criminal aspects next one is article 136 this is also very very important so special leave petition spl <coughs> uh, 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 by the supreme court <coughs> so it grants the supreme court discretionary power so please try to remember this word this particular article article 136 <coughs> grants the supreme court the discretionary power to grant special leave to appeal against any judgment or order in any manner <coughs> so in this way <coughs> article 136 becomes very very powerful weapon in the hands of the supreme court so it can grant leave or <coughs> it can put hold to any judgment that is passed by the lower courts right so in this way it becomes very very important the honorable supreme court has used it repeatedly <coughs> to uh, uh, to put uh, uh, put uh, to stop the judgments that are given by the lower courts next one is article 137 review of judgments uh, judgments are orders by the supreme court so it allows the supreme court to review its own judgments 
or orders ensuring a mechanism of correct correcting errors so the supreme court has the power to review its own judgments all right <coughs> right so there are some important cases like golaknath case and uh, in case one and the bharti case it itself reviewed or overturned the judgment it is given in the golaknath case so these are uh, two famous examples uh, there is a decision golaknath case and the same decision is overturned by the supreme court in keshavan and the bharati case so the supreme court has the power of reviewing its own judgments uh, why this power has been given it has given to correct if there are any errors similarly to accommodate accommodate any economic changes uh, changes that are coming from uh, coming in the society and polity of the country so in this way article 139 137 also becomes very very important next article is article 138 enlargement of jurid, jurisdiction of the supreme court so the parliament has the power to extend the jurisdiction of the supreme court with respect to any matter in the concurrent list so the parliament has this particular power it can enhance the jurisdiction of the supreme court so remember try to remember the parliament has the power to enhance the jurisdiction but it do not have the power to reduce the jurisdiction so it don't the parliament do not have this power reducing the jurisdiction of the supreme court so please try to remember uh, this aspect similarly article 139 conferment of on the supreme court of uh, supreme court powers to issue certain writs so we have seen under article 32 a right to constitutional rem uh, remedies whenever a fundamental right of a citizen is uh, violated the honorable supreme court can issue writs so the basically the writs are, uh, writs are five writs habeas corpus mandamus prohibition quo warranto and certiorari so we have discussed in detail about these writs in the fundamental rights part so i am not going in detail into it but uh, article 139 grants the uh, the supreme court to or the high courts to issue writs under article 32 and article 229 for uh, high court we will discuss about the that later next is article 140 ancillary powers of the supreme court so ancillary powers necessary for the enforcement of decrees and orders that are uh, given by the supreme court right next one is article 141 law declared by supreme court to be binding on all courts so it establishes the binding nature of law declared by supreme court on all courts within the territory of india so whatever judgment given by the supreme court whatever judgment given by the supreme court it is binding on all other courts that are existing in the territory of india right next article is article 142 this is also very very important article so enforcement of decrees and orders of the supreme court and orders to discovery etc so it grants the supreme court the authority to pass orders necessary for doing complete justice uh, in any cause or manner so to do complete justice the honorable supreme court has the power to uh, rule uh, uh, power to um, authority to pass any orders so this particular Uh, right has been given to supreme court so this is also becomes article 142 also becomes the source of judicial activism so this is also increasingly and repeatedly used by the honorable supreme court we will see in the later part of this lecture about the judicial activism of the honorable supreme court and how the article articles like an um, article 142 and article 136 have been used to realize this power of judicial activism next is article uh, 143 advisory ju jurisdiction so the power of president to consult the supreme court so the president of india can seek the advice or opinion opinion of the supreme court on question of law or fact please try to remember this fact so the honorable uh, president can um, inquire or take opinion of the supreme court on issues of law or fact 
so we'll try to see some more aspects regarding to this one so <coughs> it is not obligatory so whenever the honorable uh, president asks or uh, requests opinion of the supreme court the supreme court can give its opinion or refuse to give its opinion right it can give its opinion it can refuse to give its opinion similarly the president can accept the opinion of the supreme court or he can choose to ignore the advice or opinion given by the supreme court so in this way it is not binding binding on any party so both party can accept it or can ignore it so there is no problem in it so basically there is, uh, this option is non binding on the um, non binding on the both the parties so one important aspect at one time about the babri in babri masjid case the uh, the president has asked the opinion of of uh, opinion of the supreme court but the uh, supreme court choose not to uh, respond to that request so this is one famous example where the uh, uh, advisory jurisdiction of the supreme court has been invoked next is article 145 rules of the supreme court so it empowers the supreme court to make rules for regulating its practice procedure and appointment of officers so this particular uh, power has been given given again to ensure the independence of judiciary independence of judiciary so it has the power to make its own rules and regulations for conducting its day to day activities next one is article 146 officers and servants and expenses of the supreme court so the supreme court along with the allocation of the it addresses the appointment conditions of the service of officers and the servants of the supreme court along with the allocation of expenses the supreme court has the power to appoint its own employees and decide their emoluments service conditions so this is also granted to judiciary to protect and maintain its independence so basically the uh, 145 and 146 are given to ensure the independence of the judiciary right so these are the some of the basic and important articles uh, with uh, uh, relating to judiciary now we will try and understand some more aspects about the judiciary right powers and responsibilities of the judiciary so the important power and responsibility of the judiciary is judicial review judicial review so over the time this has become very important weapon in the hands of the judiciary right so it uh, the constitution grants the judiciary the power of judicial review over legislative and administrative actions so on any issue that is uh, if any law is made by the parliament or any initiative is taken by the government so it can review uh, the judiciary can review that aspect and it can declare that whether it is in accordance with the law or not so the article supporting the judicial review power are article 13 so basically article 13 says that uh, if whether a, if a law is against or violating the fundamental principles if any particular law is against the fundamental rights and violating the fundamental rights of the citizens the supreme court has the power to declare that uh, law as invalid so the sources of judicial review are article 13 and again article 32 Uh, this is given to restore the fundamental rights of the citizens the honorable supreme court has the uh, power to issue writs again article 136 so this is special leave petition and we have uh, just now we have seen article 142 so all those uh, articles enable the judicial judiciary the power to review the decisions or uh, laws made by the government next is the best recent best and recent example to quote here is the issue about electoral bonds so what happened uh, with the electoral bonds uh, electoral bonds the honorable supreme court declared them as null and void 
right so because uh, the electoral bonds are uh, i mean there are lot of secrecy in involved in the, in them secrecy is involved in the electoral bonds because uh, the donors of the donors of uh, donors of the money to the political parties their names are not coming out and uh, this may lead to quid pro quo quid pro quo and uh, this violates the people's right to know about their uh, i mean people have the right to know the uh, the funders of the uh, funders of the political parties who is donating to which political party accordingly they can vote they can uh, choose to vote so this particular uh, electoral bonds this particular scheme is violating that right to know so in this way the honorable supreme court has declared the electoral bond scheme as null and void so there are many other uh, uh, examples like njac national Judi uh, judicial appointment uh, appointments commission uh, the honorable supreme court also declared this uh, as null and void and uh, this uh, njac ceases to ceased to exist so there are n number of examples showing the judicial review power of the supreme court next is enforcing fundamental rights this is also very very important role and the responsibility of the supreme court article 32 directly says uh, the supreme court to protect the fundamental rights of the people of india and article 13 also says that if whether any action or law of the government if it violates the fundamental rights it can be declared as null and void so this uh, this power is also uh, granted through article 13 so in many cases we have seen many judgments of the supreme court declaring many laws many laws null and void because they are violating the fundamental rights of the people so it also the uh, protecting the fundamental rights this duty entrusts the judiciary with the task of enforcing the fundamental rights guaranteed to the citizens under part 3 of the constitution so these two are very very important and the most important uh, roles and responsibilities of the judiciary next one is uh, we will try and understand the structure of judiciary so basically we have a unified judiciary unified judici uh, judiciary means we have only one single structure of the judiciary the judiciary is not separate for center and states all right so basically we have taken this uh, provision uh, i mean this version of judiciary from uk great britain so britain also follows unified judiciary however when we take the constitution of usa united states of america they follow a different type of judiciary that is separated judiciary or we can call it as non unified judiciary because uh, the different uh, i mean different structure is there for to look into federal aspects there is a federal court and it will only look into the federal aspects federal aspects federal aspects means the disputes between center and states or among the states and there is separate judiciary and it is it is which is maintained by states itself so all the issues related to those courts high courts that are existing the, in the states uh, those aspects are managed by the state government itself so here the usa has a separate judiciary against that we have unified judiciary a single judicial structure for the entire country right the supreme court uh, is placed at the apex level in this structure so next one is independent judiciary so the judiciary is not under the control of the parliament the judiciary is uh, independent here so the judiciary is designed to be independent of the executive and legislature uh, legislative branches right if you see the example here the judiciary is only subordinate subordinate to the constitution right it is not subordinate to executive or the parliament if you take the example of uk united King kingdom or britain so the judiciary is either directly or indirectly under the control of the parliament right because uh, in, in britain there is no written constitution all the rules and regulations are coming through the conventions only there the parliament is supreme so parliament is the highest body in britain so it can 
make judgment uh, make amendments to the power of the supreme court so the judiciary is effectively under the control of the parliament in britain but that is not the case in india so it is the judiciary is only subjected to or controlled by the constitution of india not by the executive or the legislature if we also see the case of usa here the judiciary has assumed a lot of power over time and we can say it, it has become supreme even it can pass judgments against the executive executive and even against the legislature there we call it as senate right <coughs> so uh, there the uh, supreme court or federal court for that matter assumed lot of powers and it kind of became it has become the supreme body when it comes to united states of america but the good thing in india is that the balance between the three organs of the government is still being managed uh, the executive judiciary and legislature because we have a constitution and the constitution distributes and balances the powers between the or among the three organs of the government so that is the reason right <coughs> now we will understand the structure so uh, the supreme court of india it is the highest court in the country and there are high courts so generally there are uh, there is a high court for each and every state there is a common high court for uh, one or two uh, courts uh, we can say for punjab and haryana we have only, uh, we have only one court so <clears throat> there are also some i mean the delhi uh, in, in spite of being a union territory we have a separate high court for it and uh, similarly uh, the jurisdiction i mean some of the uh, union territories like lakshadweep and the andaman and nicobar islands so they share the high court with some other states so the principle is that each and every state uh, has a uh, has a high court but uh, some some states are having a common uh, high court so the, those kind of arrangements are there so next uh, under the high courts we have a uh, subordinate judiciary uh, basically having this courts at the district and the local level so <clears throat> that is not uh, in, uh, the structure below the high courts is not that important when it comes to the examination so basically the two important things are supreme court and high courts and the courts at the district level right so constitution provides specific provis uh, provisions regarding supreme court and high courts though the issues relating to supreme court and high courts are mentioned in the constitution and the rest of the courts Uh, the aspects of lower judiciary have been left to state governments right so basically this is the structure of the judiciary so important point to remember here is that we are following a system of unified judiciary so there is no separation in the judiciary next we will see uh, appointment of judges so basically appointments are done through a collegium system collegium so collegium appoints the judges when it comes to supreme court supreme court so collegium comprises of cji chief justice of india and four more senior judges so when it comes to high courts it includes cji plus chief justice of particular high court that particular high court and three more senior most judges so this comprises the collegium so basically the collegium system has evolved through famously known cases three judges cases so there is first judges case there is second judges case and there is third judges cases so some people uh, some uh, constitutional or legal experts uh, experts call the njsc case national judicial appointments uh, commission case they call it as the fourth judges case so here a different system uh, for the appointment uh, appointment appointment of judges has been brought by the government but the honorable supreme court declared this particular aspect as uh, null and void because it is violating the independence of the judiciary so still for appointment of judges the collegium system is existing Uh, we have understood what is collegium and how it evolved it evolved through the three judges 
cases very famous cases uh, in the when we discuss the mains we will look much more detail into the uh, three judges cases so there is a lot of criticism about the collegium system also because here the judges are appointing themselves judges are appointing themselves so nowhere else in the world this practice is in vogue so nowhere in the world the judges are appointing the, uh, themselves only in india the judges are appointing themselves so in some way it is also criticized but the judiciary says what the judiciary says that we are protecting our independence protecting our independence so please uh, try to remember these aspects because this is a very important uh, area when it comes to examinations so it is important for both the prelims and mains examination right so there is another aspect related to appointment of judges that is mop memorandum of procedure uh, still it is not agreed upon so there it uh, the issue is pending let's hope that uh, soon uh, sooner the memorandum memorandum of procedure is accepted and approved by both the government and the judiciary right similarly the lower courts below the high court are appointed by respective high court collegium so in that way the appoint appointments are done to the uh, local courts courts below the high courts so please try to remember these aspects aspects about the collegium system in india right next is provisions for independence of the judiciary so earlier in this lecture we have seen why independence of judiciary is important so independence of judiciary independence of judiciary is very very important independence of judiciary is very very important because one is it has to give judgments without fear and favor without fear or favor next is there is a system of separation of powers separation of powers and there are there is a principle of checks and balances checks and balances to ensure all these things the judiciary needs to be independent right so there are some aspects or provisions that are incorporated in the constitution itself to ensure the independence of the judiciary so let's try and understand what are those principles uh, first one is appointment of judges through collegiums so we have just before uh, this one we have understood what is collegium system so the judges are appointed by the collegium in which the executive do not have a say so executive is is effectively removed from this process so in that way the executive cannot control a judge because he is not appointing the executive is not appointing a judge so in this way the independence of the judges is maintained basically the collegium recommends the names so the president has to announce those persons as appointed so that is uh, the role of the executives come confined to only that part the collegium recommends the names and the president has to announce that that particular is uh, appointed to that particular position so this is one point appointment of uh, judges through collegium system next security of tenure that is also guaranteed to uh, guaranteed to the judges in the constitution itself so 65 years for supreme court judges so until they reach the age of supreme uh, 65 uh, the supreme court judges will keep on working and it is 62 for high court judges so there is a security of tenure next is prohibition of supreme court judges from practicing law after retirement so basically the judges after retiring from the supreme court they cannot practice they cannot practice law right next one is payment of first class salaries good salaries and allowances and privileges we have also seen there is a particular article saying about their salaries and allowances right so there is financial autonomy also next one is immunity of judges actions and decisions in their official capacity 
uh, from any court of law. So they cannot be the uh, judges' actions cannot be discussed in any court of law or even in the parliament. So the parliament cannot discuss the actions of the judges. So only uh, in only case where the parliament can discuss the actions of the uh, judge are with, uh, whenever the impeachment proceedings impeachment proce impeachment proceedings are taking place with respect to that particular judge right so uh, the uh, earlier we have seen the judges have a security of tenure of 65 years and 62 years so they can only be removed through impeachment right so basically the removal i mean the resolution to impeach the judge uh, judges it has to be passed through a special majority special majority that is two third of the total members present and voting and um, the strength also should be more than half of the uh, total membership of the house so when we discuss the mains we will discuss all these things so for prelims uh, remember this that the judges can only be removed through uh, the method of impeachment and uh, the uh, through a special majority that imp impeachment resolution has to be passed by a special majority right next is supreme court's authority have its own established uh, and establishment and complete control over it so the honorable supreme court has uh, uh, total control when it comes to the uh, day to day management of the uh, supreme court or uh, its own established it establishment so it has total control over the all the affair uh, affairs about the i mean day to day aspects that are happening in the supreme court so in this way plus the provision of impeachment so basically uh, basically it is it is a very tough procedure to remove uh, the judges so along with all these provisions it has been um, made very difficult to remove the judges so in this way the independent independence of judiciary has been ensured so we also understood why the judiciary needs to be independent so this is important uh, these are some of the important aspects about the independence of the judiciary next we will uh, try and understand the functions of the judiciary so here uh, this is also very very important each of this aspect can come as a point in the prelims questions so try to remember these phases next is uh, the important uh, duty or function of the uh, supreme court or judiciary is interpreting the constitution right so one of the important aspects whenever there is a confusion or a debate about the uh, particular article the supreme court is the final authority in interpreting that provision so when it comes to interpretation of the provisions of the constitution the supreme court becomes the final authority so it has the duty of interpreting the constitution next is upholding the federal principle and maintaining balance between government organs between and between the center of states so it has the power of upholding federal principles so as we all know we are following a system of federal polity what is federal federal means there is a government at the central level and there is also government at the state level so government is effectively there at the uh, two stages uh, for that matter government is there at the three stages local bodies also after 73rd and 74th constitutional amendments we have effectively governments at the three stages at the central level state level and at the local level so whenever there is a, there is a government at more than two levels more than one levels we call that polity as federal polity so effectively here there is a distribution of powers distribution of whenever there is a distribution of powers and that distribution is mentioned in the constitution itself so that polity is called as the federal polity right so india there is a distribution of powers between the center and the states 
so we call india as a federal polity and the supreme court has been established to protect that federal polity right so also do not confuse between uh, distribution of powers and the separate uh, separation of powers separation of powers comes with respect to uh, executive judiciary and the legislature the distribution of powers comes when it uh, i mean pertaining to the center and states so there is a distribution of powers between center and states but there is a separation of powers between the executive the judiciary and the parliament right so the duty of protecting the federal aspect is given to supreme court because if there are any disputes the supreme court is the right authority to resolve those disputes next is it ensures or provides balance between the organs of the government organs is executive judiciary and legislature so the judiciary also tries to provide a balance between the three organs of the government right similarly it also addresses if there are any disputes between the center and the states correct right. next one is guarding and protecting the fundamental rights of the citizen so it is the guardian of the fundamental rights that are guaranteed to the people in the constitution next is ensuring the constitutional validity of legislative executive and quasi judicial actions of the state so we have uh, uh, already discussed about the judicial review power so through this judicial review power it ensures the constitutional validity of the laws or actions are taken by the governments next is interpreting government made laws so this is also done through the power of judicial review guaranteed under the article 13 of the constitution so these are important functions of the judiciary try to remember uh, them they are very very important for the examination next one is next we will discuss specific aspects related to the supreme court uh, till now what we have whatever we have discussed is about the the entire judiciary whatever the aspects we have discussed it also it covers supreme court as well as the high court now we will try to discuss separately what are the aspects that are related to supreme court so broadly all these things also apply to the high courts in many cases but only the terminology is different there are only minor differences so please try to remember this aspect right the supreme court so it is the apex court in india it is the highest court in india according to the constitution so the constitution designates the supreme court as the highest court supreme court the constitution depicts the supreme court as the highest court in india right so it is it serves as the final arbiter you know the power to make final judgments relating to upholding the federal principles validity of laws and executive actions and enforcement of fundamental rights so it is the final judge when it comes to upholding or ensuring all these aspects next is role and functions so similarly whatever we have discussed in the judiciary the roles and functions will be similar so i will do a brief survey here on uh, i will do only a brief survey here so it is basically the guardian of the constitution we have already studied it upholds the federal principle of the constitution this is also we have seen it has exercised this uh, the appellate jurisdiction in civil civil criminal and constitutional matters so it has the appellate jurisdiction appellate jurisdiction so try to remember that it is different from the uh, federal court of united states so in fed in uh, united states the federal court do not have this appellate power in uh, when it comes to civil and criminal matters <laughs> so it also has advisory uh, jurisdiction under article 143 uh, so uh, the president can seek the advice <coughs> or opinion of the supreme court when it comes to law or fact so it is not binding on both the parties <clears throat> one example we have seen the president has sought the opinion of the supreme court in uh, babri masjid case but the supreme court uh, choose not to respond to this aspect next is rule making power 
invested in the uh, Supreme Court according to Articles 142 and 145. It can punish individuals for contempt under Article 129. We have also discussed in detail about it uh, about this article. So basically, content of court. There are two aspects like civil contempt. And there is criminal contempt. So civil contempt, uh, contempt is whenever a person chooses not to obey the judgment. Right. This is civil contempt. So punishments are comparatively less severe uh, when it comes to civil contempt. And there is criminal contempt. <coughs> this is uh, basically a word is used, uh, used here. Scandalizing the judiciary. So basically there is no particular definition what is mean by what is meant by scandalizing judiciary. So here it is interpreted as interfering in the judgment process of the courts. So that is scandalizing judiciary or uh, it also includes uh, defaming the judges of the uh, judges or uh, the people involved in the judiciary. So in those cases the cr criminal uh, contempt is applied and the punishments are very very severe here so this is some information of the about the content uh, content of the judiciary or the content of the supreme court please try to remember this aspect there might be a question from this area also right next one is jurisdiction of the supreme court we have seen briefly about it has four to five types of jurisdiction we will see in some detail here so the first is the original jurisdiction which is uh, en entrusted to it under the article of 131. So it has three types of uh, jurisdiction, original jurisdiction. One is dispute between center at one side and a particular state at another side. So whenever there is a bit, uh, dispute between the center and a particular state, it comes under original jurisdiction. Next is center at one side and uh, two or more states at another side state 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 so there are two or more states at one side and the center center is at uh, another side so this is also comes under the jurisdiction of uh, supreme court it is comes under it comes under original jurisdiction the third aspect is center sorry the third aspect is state versus state so there is if there is a dispute between one state and another this is also comes under original jurisdiction and it is given to the Supreme Court. So best example is whenever uh, there is a dispute between uh, states about the border and the next uh, thing about the waters, waters basically river waters. So these kind of issues come, however, there is a separate provision about the disputes relating to sharing of river waters. Uh, I'm just taking uh, taking it as an example. So, what kind of disputes can come and come between the states? So, basically, the major aspect is uh, about the border. So, all these types of uh, disputes come under original jurisdiction, and uh, it will be dealt by the Supreme Court. Next one is appellate jurisdiction under Article 132 to 136. So. The Supreme Court has the power to review and revise orders of lower courts and tribunals. So this power is entrusted to Supreme Court. Next one is, uh, it covers both civil and criminal appeals from high courts under certification permitted by the Supreme Court it's, or under the Supreme Court itself. So whenever there is a, a judgment is given by a particular high court, it also provides a certificate along with the judgment to the parties that if you are not happy with this particular judgment, you can go to the Supreme Court. So in that cases, the Supreme Court can as, uh, accept the appeal uh, uh, on the judgment of the High Court or it can directly accept the appeal. There is no need for a certificate. It can take the appeal for itself. Right. So basically, the appeals generally involve substantial question of law or constitutional interpretation or the appeal can be about the death penalty cases so basically whatever the appeals come to supreme court basically these uh, issues i mean important law uh, law aspects are involved in the those particular cases 
Next one is Article 143. We have already understood about this one. Uh, appeal advisory jurisdiction. The president seek advice or opinion of the Supreme Court. Right. Uh, it is basically non-binding on both the parties. Next is appeal by special leave petition. We have understood this one. This particular article, Article 136, is also source of the judicial review. Right. The Supreme Court, at its discretion, can grant special leave. Can grant special leave to appeal from any judgment, decree, or order of any court or tribunal in India. So basically, it can put a uh, put, it can put uh, it can stop anything, any judgment given by a particular high court. So let's take an example. If uh, suppose high court, a particular high court has granted bail to any particular person. So the Supreme Court can stop that bail and the person, that particular person can again be sent to the custody of the police or any relevant uh, authority. So that is the example of the special leave petition. So basically to realize its power of judicial review, the judiciary has repeatedly used the uh, article 136. So it becomes very, very important uh, jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. Next one is the writ jurisdiction. The Supreme Court safeguards individual liberties and fundamental rights. Uh, it can declare laws unconstitutional if they infringe on the fundamental rights. So writ jurisdiction, we have studied already Article 32 guarantees. The, uh, I mean, it guarantees the constitutional remedy if there is violation of fundamental rights. The Honorable Supreme Court it can issue writs whenever there is violation of fundamental rights. Right. It issues rights like we have seen five rights and we have understood about them in detail in the fundamental rights chapter also. Next is judicial review. So judicial review allows court to determine the validity of the laws or orders. So the Supreme Court as, as the guardian of the constitution conducts judicial review. So from where the source to or authority of judicial review is coming, it is coming through articles 39. That, uh, sorry, 13, 32, 136 and 100, 142. Plus, there is, it is coming from the inherent power derived from the court's position. So, because the constitution put the Supreme Court at the apex level. So, from being at the top of the, uh, top of the judicial structure, this uh, power of judicial review is coming to the Supreme Court. Court. Right. When we compare, if we compare the uh, the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court with the other courts, like the courts of uh, UK and the uh, United States of America, right. So unlike the American Supreme Court, or we basically we call the uh, the highest court in USA as federal court, right. So the federal court in USA basically primarily primarily deals with the federal cases and constitutional validity of the actions taken by the executive. However, the Indian Supreme Court along with those aspects, along with uh, dealing with the federal uh, federal aspects and the constitutional questions, it has also have the uh, or entertains the civil and criminal appeals from the lower courts. Next is, next difference is Indian Supreme Court's jurisdiction is broader. So, Indian Supreme Court's jurisdiction is broader, broader, allowing it to entertain appeals from any court or any court or tribunal that is placed in the territory of India. So, basically, when compared to the Federal Court of United States of America, the Indian Supreme Court's uh, jurisdiction is broader. Right. So, additionally, the uh, Indian Supreme Court has the uh, jurisdiction of advisory jurisdiction where the president can seek opinion or advice of the Supreme Court. So this particular provision or jurisdiction, jurisdiction is not there in the USA constitution. So these are the broader differences. Try to remember them. So this information about the comparison of the judiciaries, it may be useful in the for the main part also. Right. So limitations, if you see, uh, there are few limitations for judiciary because 
uh, we will see those limitations so the powers of the supreme court are contingent on the constitution so basically the powers of the supreme court are derived from the constitution so they can be limited or suspended by union union legislature through constitutional amendments amendments so a case might come that the union executive or the legislature uh, for example uh, for that matter parliament can become too strong and it can amend the constitution <coughs> in that way the powers or the uh, aspects of the judiciary might be compromised so so basically the powers of the supreme court uh, or the judiciary are coming from the constitution so there is a chance of its powers might be curtailed so we have seen uh, during the decades of 1970s for that matter from 1950 onwards 1950 to 1970s uh, end of the 1970s especially during the 1970s when mrs gandhi was the prime minister uh, she tried to implement the direct to principle dpsp and in that way in that uh, un, in that effort to implement the direct to principles of state policy she has brought in series of amendments like 23 24 25 which are actively sought to similarly even in the article 47 42 constitutional amendment also so she has tried to curtail the power of judiciary curtail the power of or the juri jurisdiction of the judiciary all right so there were efforts so some people were at that time uh, at that time Uh, during the judgment of keshavananda bharati sorry during the case of golaknath case uh, doubted the capability <coughs> of the judiciary to protect the uh, fundamental rights of the people or uh, protect the fundamental rights of the uh, people or <coughs> there was a discuss a discussion about the aspect like committed uh, committed judiciary committed judiciary means uh, the jud uh, committed judiciary basically means the judiciary towing the line of the executive i mean <coughs> the judiciary delivering judgments convenient the, uh, that are convenience to the executive executive convenient to the executive so there were uh, the doubts some accused the judiciary as uh, committed judiciary so there were uh, efforts increasing uh, there were lot of efforts from the side of the executive and legislature to reduce the authority or jurisdiction of the courts it uh, sought the executive sought to cut, curtail the powers of the judiciary however the judiciary refuted all those efforts and uh, it declared all those actions or uh, amendments as uh, null and void through the power of judicial review and uh, the uh, autonomy or independence of the judiciary has been uh, retained and uh, it uh, emphasized its authority it emphasized with authority through uh, through a series of judgments including keshavananda bharati keshavananda bharati case uh, <coughs> maneka gandhi case gandhi case and even through minerva mills case minerva mills case and even in the sr bommai case sr bommai case so through these judgments the uh, judiciary has asserted its independence so basically this is the uh, discussion about the tussle between the executive and the judiciary and the efforts of the executive to curtail or control the judiciary and the judiciary asserting its independence and authority however what the the taking point here is there is a chance of the executive or the parliament become, becoming too strong and uh, it is it uh, the aspect or the chance of curtailing the powers of the judiciary so basically because the powers of the judiciary all are coming from the constitution so opposed to this where in india the powers are coming from the constitution in usc the judiciary 
the judiciary assumed power through the procedure through the history through the conventions so the authority of uh, the basically in usa assumed a lot of powers and independence through the procedural aspects and through the uh, judgment series of judgments uh, uh, i mean in which the judiciary has asserted its uh, independence and uh, day by day that authority in usa is increasing so there the judiciary became supreme right so this is the basic difference uh, between the indian judiciary and the judiciary in united states of america so please try to remember these points right similarly during emergencies the powers can be suppressed or suspended so as you all know during the emergency uh, some of the fundamental rights excluding article 20 and 21 so apart from these articles other fundamental rights can be suspended so in those kind of situations the authority of the supreme court is effectively uh, curtailed or reduced so we have uh, seen during the emergency days 19 1975 to 77 actually uh, the honorable supreme court or the judiciary failed to uh, the provide the principle of habeas corpus right so the there were arbitrary arrest and the people have been put behind the bars but the judiciary refused to uh, enforce or ensure the fundamental right of people the through the habeas corpus writ so there are some con- compromises in the part so these are some of the limitations when it comes to judiciary of india right so i also wanted to discuss uh, the two important aspects judicial activ- activism and uh, pil public interest litig- litigation pil public inter- interest litigation and uh, judicial activism these are very very important uh, topics and there is lot of discussion around these two aspects but due to paucity of time and I'm, i am unable to discuss those things make sure that you will uh, read some information about uh, the these two aspects uh, what is pil and what is judicial activism judicial activism i have seen so most of the aspects covered in the judicial review also covered under the judicial activism so right also uh, public inter- interest litigation it is part of the judicial review and judicial activism so pill pill is basically one of the aspects of judicial activism activism so it is to protect the interest of the weaker sections though are those are people who are marginal marginalized sections marginalized sections of the people so to protect the interest of these people marginalized sections those who are disadvantaged disadvantaged the particular pill an strong and powerful instru- instrument has been uh, brought by the judiciary so basically here the principle of loca standi has been liberalized so so basically the pill is about these aspects so because of paucity of time i am unable to cover these aspects please make sure that you will read some inf- something about these two aspects because these two aspects are very important for the examination point of view so when we discuss the main uh, videos i'll make sure that I, w- i will cover these two aspects in some details so, right so now we will see some uh, questions asked uh, from this topic previously so first question i am taking it is asked in 2021 the question is which of the following indian polit uh, which of the following in indian polity is an essential feature that indicates that it is federal in character so the options given are independence of the ju- ju- judiciary is safeguarded union legislature has elected representatives from constituent units third option is union cabinet can have elected representatives from regi- regional parties so the fundamental rights are enforced by courts of law so here these are actually all are factual statements when we have when we see them independently but the thing is when it comes to federal aspect so this first option becomes correct the independence of uh, judiciary is safeguarded because judiciary is part of the three organs of the government and uh, there are checks and balances between three these three organs and that is protected by the independence of the judiciary 
Right. So correct answer is option A. Next, next question is, uh, the question is asked in 2017, which of the following is not a feature of Indian federalism? Right. So, right. The options are, there is an independent, independent judiciary in India. The powers have been clearly divided between center and states. The federating units have been given unequal repre representation in uh, Rajya Sabha. So, which of the following is not a feature of, feature of Indian federalism? Right. <coughs> so, basically, the independent of judiciary, this is also a principle in uh, federal system. Powers have been clearly divided between center and states. I have explained this aspect just before. So, this is also the feature of uh, federal federalism. Third one is, uh, the federating units have been given unequal representation in Rajya Sabha. So, when we see the legislature, tomorrow we are going to discuss the legislature aspect. There we will cover both Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha. So, this is, there is unequal representation for states in Rajya Sabha. So, this is also one federal principle. So, which is not correct with respect to federalism is this option D, last one. It is the result of an agreement among the federating units. So, this is not taken place in India. So, basically, federalism in India has been incorporated for administrative convenience. Administrative convenience. So, states do not come together with an agreement. So, this has happened basically in USA. So, politics like USA, the states have come together through an agreement and they have formed the federalism. But that is, the not, that is not the case in India. So, the right answer is option D. Next and last question, it is also asked in 2017. The question is, in India, the judicial review implies. So, it is a simple and direct question. First option is, the power of the judiciary to pronounce upon the constitutionality of laws and executive orders. So, directly you can say that this is correct about the judicial review. Let's also see the other options. The power of the judiciary to question wisdom of the laws enacted by the legislatures. So, this is uh, in India, judicial review implies. So, this is the correct explanation. The power of the second option is the power of the judiciary to question the wisdom. So, it cannot question the wisdom. It can only declare whether the laws are according, accord, in accordance with the constitution or not. It can only look into that aspect. Now, it cannot question the wisdom. So, I mean, be, be, be aware of these kind of, uh, kind of confusing statements. You should be very clear to recognize uh, sentences like this. Third option is the power of the judiciary to review all the legislative enactments before they are assented by the president. So, the judiciary can look, in, look into the laws only they are assented by the president. Only after that it can look into. Before that it cannot look into the legislative aspects. The third option is the power of the judiciary to review its own judgments given earlier in similar different cases. So, this power is there. We, we, I mean, this power is there for uh, judiciary. It can review its own judgments. But this is not part of the judicial review. So, judicial review is, it is reviewing the actions, decisions and the laws made by the executive. That co comes in the judicial review power. So, basically, if you see, all these statements also look relevant and correct. But, you should be you should be having clarity to uh, detect or find out the correct statement from these aspects right so so this is all this is all the uh, all the important aspects that are there to discuss today so thank you thank you for uh, joining the lecture see you tomorrow right mm -hmm.